Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sylvia and my channel is all about art and craft. Now, I thought I'm going to do a video on the kind of things that you need when you want to do acrylic painting. And it's basically the basics to get you started. And it also helps people who don't really have all have the money to purchase all the bits and pieces that everybody tells you to get okay now I'm going to start off with a palette now I have a ceramic tile as a palette it's brilliant because it's easy to clean it doesn't stain which is awesome so that's number one now you can also use an old dinner plate you know something like that the other thing that you want is a spray bottle with water because acrylic paints have a tendency to dry up really quickly so by having a spray bottle on you you can just give it a quick spritz to make sure it stays nice and wet so now we'll look at the kind of paint brushes. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a few here. I actually have one over to the side as well. Okay. Now, I'm not saying get every single one of them, but these are just some of the ones that I suggest to you um, to get in order to have a variety so that you can do different techniques. So, first of all, we've got a blender brush here. Now, the reason why I put the blender brush here is because I don't actually have a filbert brush, but the filbert brush has the same shape up the top here. It's rounded, okay? Brilliant. So, that's one I would suggest to get, and, you know, choose whatever size you feel comfortable with this is actually my old filbert brush that I tortured a bit and I actually managed to get some paint in there so it's now turned a bit on the fuzzy side which gets me to the next point one of these deer foot stippler brushes is brilliant especially if you want to do you know like uh, trees things like that however if you already have a worn out brush like this you don't need this you can just use that because you can get pretty much the same effects the other thing that I'll suggest is get a couple of flat brushes all right a big one and a little one now I actually just washed mine so they're still a bit on the wet side so you know that way you've got two different sizes then you've got an angle brush now they are brilliant because it's very easy to draw a line and you can also just use the tip of the brush in order to get some fine details in so again uh, my suggestion is get two different types like two different sizes a larger one and a smaller one that way you know if it's a little bit more um, confined space you can use a smaller one but for the bigger areas you can use the big one now going on to the round brushes now I actually kind of put them the wrong way whoops that's okay you want a nice big round brush that has a nice point then you want a smaller one and again it's to do with if you need to go into smaller areas well if you don't feel comfortable with like if you're having a hard time with the big one you can switch over to a smaller one or 
you can get even a smaller one than that. Okay, so hence why I've got three out. But you can actually just go with a large one and one that's a lot smaller. Like this one is a number one. And this one is a number 12. Where this one is a number six. The other thing that you really, really want is a liner brush. Now, as you can see, it's got nice, long, thin um, bristles on it. So it's something worth getting because this is designed for very fine details like grasses or whatever. The other thing that you want to get is some fan brushes. Now I actually took these ones out of my brush set that I've got for my oil paints because the one thing you don't want to do is mix your acrylic brushes with your oil paint brushes. So, but just for this I've just pulled them out so that I can show you the sizes that you want. Some people get the much bigger ones, but you will find that it's a lot, you have a lot more difficulty in achieving what you want to achieve, especially if you want to do, you know, some trees or um, grasses or anything like that. So I suggest, as a guideline, get a number five and a number two, okay, because they actually pretty much a perfect size. The other one that you want is like a stippler brush and this one, that what makes it different between these two is the, bri the bristles on the brush, on the flat brush they're a lot longer and softer where on the stippler brush they're short and stiff. Okay, now depending on the size of paintings that you like to do, um, you might want to get a cheap two inch brush. Now this one is just a cheap two inch brush from the hardware store. Okay, I generally don't use it for um, acrylics. I generally just use one of my bigger flat brushes. However, it is an option and they're not that expensive, which is good. The other thing that you probably would want is a palette knife. Now, we know you can get different type of palette knives where it's sort of long and narrow at the front and the handle sort of comes up like that, comes up like that and then goes over. I actually find those ones more on the difficult side when it comes to painting where with this one I can just use it whichever way I want, not a problem. However, if you can't get one because you know you haven't got the money for it or whatever, grab an old credit card or gift card and cut it up. You can get the same effects with that than what you can with this. All right. Now Getting onto the paints. Now I'll just move these over to one side. The most common colours you would want is, of course, your titanium white. And you want a lot of this, okay? Because you generally go through quite a bit of the titanium white than what you would do with any of the other colours. So we've got titanium white, then you want like a um, a brilliant red or bright red. 
Then you want a uh, crimson or quinacridone magenta. Okay. The other color you want is some cadmium yellow medium, some yellow ochre, or as this, this one is actually called toasted marshmallow, but it is actually yellow ochre. Then you want either a hooker's green or a sap green. Generally, I, I like to use sap green. However, in this particular brand, they didn't have them. The only one they had was hooker's green. So, but it still works just as good. The other color that you want is burnt umber. Now, you can also, like if you don't want to get burnt umber, you can also get burnt sienna. Okay, and I'll explain in a minute why I suggest these. And the other one that you want, and you probably want two of the different blues that I'm about to mention. Um, this one is phthalo blue, but you also would want, or you choose, ultramarine blue. Now, ultramarine blue is sort of, it's got a bit of a purple tinge to it. So... I generally don't like to use ultramarine blue, especially for the sky. However, we all keep learning, doesn't matter what age we are, and there's one thing I had learned about ultramarine blue, and that is you can get a really nice purple by mixing in some crimson. So, and you can also turn it into a black um, by adding some burnt sienna or burnt umber. Okay. Now, because I've got the thalo blue, but I also have the quinacridone magenta, I can still create a purple and I still cr can create my black. So in reality, you don't need the color black, okay? By having all these colors here, you can create pretty much any color you want, whether it's a gray, black, purple, orange. You've got all your colors here in order to make those colors. So... There you have it. In the next one that I'm actually going to do is um, I will show you how easy it is to get the paint off, off the tile. And what I'm going to do is I will actually on purpose let the paint dry for a couple of days on this tile so that you can see how easy I can still clean it. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you'd like to see more videos like this and you would like to, you know, grow with me, follow along with me and, you know, be part of my little family and um, also be sure to give us a thumbs up and if you, th if you know of anybody else that might find um, my tutorials useful because, you know, it's something they're interested in as well, then be sure to share it with them. So until next week, I hope you have an awesome week and an awesome weekend and be sure to be creative. See you later.